I know this video is kind of random, and most of the people on my channel are horror fans, but they know that sometimes I talk about WWE, and somebody's got to talk about this. Um, the heel turn of Stone Cold Steve Austin, and it, I think it lasted from April of 01 until about November of 01 and let me tell you as a wrestling fan that was the weirdest eight months of my life seriously and I know people hated the invasion angle I didn't what I hated was this right here. The, you see this photo? This is a photo of Stone Cold Steve Austin in July of 2001. Stone Cold Steve Austin, literally one of the baddest wrestlers on the planet. This guy is legit badass. And right here, he's wearing... A fucking cowboy hat standing next to his sworn enemy Vince McMahon this literally makes no sense at all I mean the the Stone Cold character and I'm not even gonna pretend to be this all-knowing wrestling fan because I've only been a fan since 1999 I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I've been a fan since the early 90s I mean I used to watch it with my grandfather but I didn't become a hardcore wrestling fan until 1999 but as far as I know Stone Cold Steve Austin was established as a badass and the Stone Cold Steve Austin character was basically invented in 1995 so from about 1995 to 2001 this character was a badass and by 2001 I don't know like what WWE was thinking I don't know if it was Stone Cold Steve Austin's idea, but they just totally dropped the ball with this fucking guy. Let's start with um, 1999. First of all, according to the storyline, this guy gets run over in 1999, November of 1999. Uh, during the Survivor Series pay-per-view and I think it was in Detroit and the story basically says that Rikishi did it for The Rock and that Triple H masterminded it that's the way the story goes and Triple H basically cut this badass promo Talking about how he masterminded the whole thing. So Stone Cold Steve Austin gets run over. And then he he's out for a year. With the exception of him making a cameo. On TV. On WWE TV. In April of 2000. He made a cameo on Smackdown. And he made a cameo on uh, Backlash 2000 to help The Rock defeat Triple H. So, this is the part I don't get. So basically, he comes back to WWE on a full-time basis in September of 2000, right? This badass guy, this kick-ass dude comes back in September of 2000 and he just beats the shit out of everyone he's stunning everyone I remember William Regal was reading Shakespeare or some shit and then Austin just comes down to the ring 
and stuns the shit out of William Regal and leaves. I remember he stunned Chris Benoit. Um, he stunned Shane McMahon. He was doing all this badass shit. And then, let me see, about... So about seven months later, he turns heel. So he comes back in September. <laughs> He's a badass like he was when he left in 1999. He comes back in September of 2000. And he's still a badass, but then, in April of 2001, all of that goes out the window. And for what? Because he decides to turn heel. According to the story, the character, Stone Cold Steve Austin, didn't think he could beat The Rock. So, he... Goes to Vince McMahon and asks for help. Vince McMahon comes out with a chair and gives it to Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then Stone Cold Steve Austin just beats the shit out of the rock with the chair. Let's dissect this storyline for a second. So this badass dude... That already beat The Rock in two consecutive WrestleManias. He beat him in 1999. Or excuse me. The, the, the first WrestleMania he beat him in. Yeah, it was 1999. He had already beat The Rock before. And so he was going to fight him again in 2001. And you're telling me this guy didn't think he could beat The Rock? Like, it doesn't make any sense. He had, he beat a car. A car ran him over, and he cheated death. And this is 2001. This is his sixth year as Stone Cold Steve Austin. So you're telling me he doesn't think he can beat The Rock. This badass dude that went to war with Vince McMahon for years doesn't think he could beat The Rock? That literally doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? It goes against who the Stone Cold Steve Austin character is. Like, Stone Cold Steve Austin, this is not Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't trust anybody. Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't ask for anybody's help. Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't lack confidence. He would try his best to beat your ass to the best of his ability. And if he didn't do it, then he just didn't do it. But he would at least try to beat you. And if he failed, he just failed. You see, I deal with characters all the time because I review movies. And when you review movies, you learn a character's makeup. You learn the character's personality. And Stone Cold Steve Austin is not real. He's just another character. But the point is, this goes against the character's personality. So he turns heel and he aligns himself with Vince McMahon. His sworn enemy. Like it literally doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, he aligns himself with Triple H. So wait a minute. You align yourself with the very guy that basically bragged about almost killing you. What? It, it, it just literally doesn't make any sense. This is one of the dumbest storylines in WWE history. People say the invasion storyline is dumb. No, this storyline is dumb. It literally made no sense for Stone Cold Steve Austin to align himself 
with the man that basically bragged about running him over. And then his excuse was, oh, well, wouldn't you want somebody that was that crazy to be on your side? No, I wouldn't. Because then they might try to do it again. It literally didn't make any kind of sense whatsoever. It, it just didn't. And then on top of that, if it wasn't bad enough for him to turn heel, then what does he do? Then he starts singing with Kurt Angle, playing the guitar with Kurt Angle. When just months earlier, he beat Kurt Angle up before WrestleMania. Like, it just didn't make any sense. I, I don't know. And then they had this one storyline where Stone Cold basically turned his back on WWF, you know, now WWE, and joined the Alliance. And then they had this storyline where Kurt Angle was about to throw him over the bridge. And Kurt Angle's like, cry for me, Austin. And Austin's literally pretending to cry. And I'm like, what the fuck did they do to this character? This guy was such a badass. So then, long story short, well, I guess I should say this. They had a YouTuber from England that made a video and he said the reason why the heel turn didn't work is because they didn't have anybody to oppose Stone Cold Steve Austin. You see, when when there's a heel turn, you have to have a good guy to, to balance things out. But when Stone Cold Steve Austin turned heel, The Rock left. So there was nobody to balance it out. You had two heels in Stone Cold Steve Austin and Triple H. And you, and you had no face. Because The Rock was gone. So they had to come up with somebody to balance it out. First they tried it with the Hardy Boys. And that was just dumb. So then they tried it with The Undertaker. They tried to balance things out with The Undertaker. And, they, you know, basically The Undertaker took Rock's place. And that didn't work. I don't know. It was just stupid. And then if that wasn't enough, then there was that stupid catchphrase. What? 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 It, it just sounded dumb. And I know it's a very popular catchphrase. I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for making this video. I'm not hating on Stone Cold. I said I don't like the heel turn. Because after the heel turn, I was never able to take him seriously again. It's like I can't take this guy seriously anymore. This is the same guy that played the guitar with Kurt Angle. Now, some people will say, well, what about The Rock? He plays the guitar. Yes, but The Rock has always been silly. We're used to that with The Rock. He's always been a silly character. I mean, think about it. Who wiggles their tongue? Nobody does that. Who talks on the microphone and sings on the microphone while beating somebody up. No one does that except for him. He's always been silly. But this guy was established as a badass, no nonsense, don't play any games with anybody, will kick the shit out of you, and all this. And now all of a sudden this guy, you know, he's singing with Kurt Angle. It, it just didn't work for me. I didn't like it. It was dumb, but that's my opinion on it. They they tried to turn him face in November of 2001, but like I said, by that time, I didn't even take him seriously anymore. 
because then they had him beating up Booker T in a grocery store. So, I don't know. Whatever. Like I said, I've only been a, a wrestling fan uh, since 1999. And, um, I don't know. To me, the heel turn just ruined him. It's just my opinion.